So for me, a lot of the kingdom of the heavens, uh, you know, boils down to the messaging in things like the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes, you know, blessed are the poor, uh, blessed are the mourners. But even more than that, I think, you know, it goes back even earlier to Mary and the Magnificat, um, you know, where she comes and says, you know, God will cast down the mighty, you know, feed the poor, send the rich away empty. Um, you know, it's a very upending of the order of the world as it is now in favor of a sort of like radical equality. Hi, I'm Ron Hogan. I use he, him pronouns. I live in New York City, specifically Queens, and I attend Flushing Monthly Meeting. The Kingdom of the Heavens is a massive project, for lack of a better term. And, you know, it's not necessarily achievable in my lifetime or the next generation's lifetime. It's something we have to work towards incrementally. And it's something that we have to work towards in the conditions that we have to work with. And, you know, it's not something for which there are easy answers given human nature as it is now. And that actually ties into another big part of, for me, Jesus's message. Jesus talks a lot in the Gospels about repentance as we translate it today. Uh, but when he says repentance, uh, the Greek word that is being used in the Gospels is metanoia. And metanoia really means something a little bit more profound than repentance as we understand it, which is simply saying, I'm sorry I did that, I'll try not to do it again. Metanoia is more profoundly understood as sort of a change of heart or a change of mind. It is literally the taking up of a new way of thinking, a new way of living one's life. It's not simply to say like, oh, you know, sorry about that. It's to take proactive steps, not to repeat one's sins, one's errors. And so, you know, that metanoia, that, that change of heart, includes more consciously attempting to recognize that which is of God. A lot of that is unconscious on our, our parts, and by that I mean the omissions and the sins that we made, um, many of which we may have made simply by virtue of the privilege that we had and did not recognize. And once you come to recognize that and recognize that what you have been doing is antithetical to, to the gospel, you know, that's a big change. And you can sort of look back at your past life and, and be racked by guilt about it. Um, but part of, for me, what the gospels say is that, you know, God still loves you. God still recognizes that of God in you. Um, you have a do-over. And that doesn't, you know, that does not mean you are unaccountable for the things that you've done before. You are absolutely accountable. But within that accountability, you can start today to be a better person. You know, weaning yourself off of racism, misogyny, homophobia, um, you know, classism. You know, it's not an easy process. Um, but your life becomes so much richer, um, so much more vibrant um, and diverse when you make the effort to do that, that it is absolutely worth it. Thanks for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release new videos every other Thursday. We'd like to thank Arlem School of Religion for sponsoring this one. Arlem School of Religion prepares theologically diverse students for a pluralistic world. Rooted in the Quaker tradition of contemplation that inspires action, our curriculum unites spiritual formation, academic study, social engagement, and vital ministry. Together, ESR faculty and students engage in intense and thoughtful academic study while seeking a deeper connection with spirit. We use the fruits of discernment, a value with the heart of friends principles, to experiment with new, vital forms of ministry. Learn more at esr.erlem.edu. Thanks so much for watching and have a happy Thursday.